I think we are fortunate in that we are holding this just immediately after the World Telecommunication Development Conference, which uh, adopted a number of documents. Uh, one is the declaration, which is a political statement, and the second one is an action plan that uh, stipulates or defines what we are going to do, and of course the uh, strategic plan, which gives us the objectives of uh, what we will implement over the next four years. So uh, one of the outcomes was the resolution, resolution 8, which was uh, referring to statistics and the need to carry out measurements. And uh, for us, what is important is that uh, the, not only the private sector, but also the policymakers, the government, have uh, to keep track of how they are embracing the information society. And this is only possible if we can measure. Uh, so we are currently having 11 indicators that we use to develop the ICT development index. And uh, from next year, we are going to use 14 indicators, which we adopted last year. So it's very important for us to keep track of the general trends. And this year, we are going to be looking at uh, emerging technologies and how we could measure them, which is uh, big data, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, and uh, to some extent 5G uh, is a technology. When you come up with an index, uh, countries or individuals tend to compare themselves against others. But what we are saying is that we want to keep track of the general trends and each country should self-examine. They should measure against themselves the achievements that they make. And we have what we call the IDI, ICT Development Index value, which shows the incremental uh, achievements of the country. And then we have the IDI ranking, which shows a comparative analysis of uh, where the country stand, stands vis-a-vis -vis other countries. So the idea is not to name and shame. The idea is simply to track progress in the information society using well-defined standards, well-defined definitions, and agreed methodology by all countries. So it is a member-driven process. The indicators are adopted by the countries and what we just do is to process and analyze, and then we get validation from those countries that uh, uh, submit. So our encouragement to member states uh, is that instead of trying to look at the number in the ranking pack, it is more important to look at themselves, their previous achi uh, achievements and their current achievements, and to try to find the gap and to see how best they can uh, close the gap. We, we are seeing a general trend. Uh, generally, some countries don't have open dialogue between the National Statistical Office, where you have the experts who deal with the statistics that are cross, uh, cut across all the sectors, and then uh, the regulatory authorities that are specializing on data related to ICTs. So we are encouraging internal coordination, uh, that they must cooperate and they must work together. Uh, the regulator authority for telecoms is dealing with uh, the supply side. And then uh, you have the National Statistics Office dealing with the households uh, on use and so forth. Uh, and then that is uh, the demand side. Now, if you have a gap between the two, uh, one produces data and the other one doesn't, then uh, the country is bound to go down. So the key finding this year is that um, the category that is well known as the least developed countries are beginning again to lag behind. And they are lagging behind in terms of uh, broadband, mobile broadband, and fixed broadband. And that is something of great concern to us. Because even in ITU, in the Constitution, the emphasis is to provide assistance to the developing countries and paying particular attention to the least developed countries. So that's one way uh, of looking at the results, which is uh, a problem for us. 
and we have to find strategies to address that need. The other thing that we find is that uh, the young people, uh, 15 to 34, uh, or to 24 rather, are really the main users. They embrace because they are still more flexible and they are growing up. Uh, it's a generation, a digital generation, I may call them. Um, so they are the ones who are really taking up uh, these technologies and using them. And then when you look at the other extreme, you look at uh, the elderly, of course. Uh, they, they didn't grow with that culture and the take up is still very low. Uh, which is also another issue. So by and large, I would say that uh, we, if I would go region by region, we find that Europe is leading the pack in terms of uh, connectivity and uh, establishing an information society, even in terms of mobile broadband. Then you look at, uh, so they, they are generally up there, and then you go to the uh, Commonwealth independent states. They are quite uh, homogeneous in terms they are doing very well. And when you go to the Asia and the Pacific, then uh, it becomes a heterogeneous. Of course, because we, we have some landlocked countries and we also have small island developing states. And then uh, we have some countries that are doing very, very well. Uh, then you look at Africa. Uh, generally, Africa is uh, lagging behind. Uh, basically because you have out of the existing 48 countries, you have about 30 of them being least developed com coming from Africa. So out of the global 48 countries defined by the UN as least developed countries, 30 of them are in Africa. And then you also have the largest share of those countries uh, being landlocked developing uh, countries. And they have difficulty having access to the sea, uh, to access the submarine cables and so forth. And uh, there is over reliance on the coastal countries for them to, to have access. So this is a, this is a, the, the, the the state of play. And then you go to the Americas. Of course, you also have gaps because you have small island developing states, although they are doing very well in the Caribbean. And then you have North America, the United States, and Canada. They are doing uh, pretty well. And then when you go down to Latin America, you will find also. Uh, some differences, which means it's also heterogeneous uh, in, in that sense. This is uh, actually very impressive because we have over 500 uh, people, participants, who have uh, turned up. And we are just coming, remember, uh, from Telecom, which was held in Busan. Uh, so countries commit money uh, to, to travel to go and spend time there. And we also organized the World Telecommunication Development Conference, uh, which was very long. Uh, so we, we are really uh, very satisfied uh, by the fact that we have such uh, big numbers. And in terms of the number of countries, we have 96 countries. Then we have members of academia, the private sector, and so forth. So people are coming, uh, particularly now I said we have uh, a window of opportunity because now we can link the issue of measurement uh, to, the, uh, to, 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 to the subject of sustainable developments. And uh, for us to measure uh, the progress we are making towards the attainment of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we must be able to measure and track the changes. And because information and communication technology is now central to the achievement of those goals, it's important that we take the leadership and we lead the way and all the countries expect, of course, out of this meeting to get indications as to how they can collect better data for better policy making and uh, also analyze the outcomes of that data, which is quite uh, important. And we are also moving from just technology-centric approaches to more, uh, more people-oriented approaches to make sure that the three pillars of the sustainable development, which is uh, the economic, social, and the environment, are all incorporated. Things that, that will impact people's lives. And the other thing that will come out of uh, this meeting is the issue of emerging technologies. Uh, we are going to be showcasing uh, the issue of the big data project that we started to collect big data for official statistics. And the next thing will be to look at uh, Internet of Things because it generates a lot of data and then uh, artificial intelligence in the end.
Next year, yes. Next year, we, we, we look forward to uh, take the bar higher. And we are going to be able to actually get more countries to submit data on big data uh, to augment the traditional statistics. That's number one. Number two, we will be able to also link uh, the indicators for sustainable development uh, so that we help the world community to measure the progress they are making in achieving uh, the 2030 development agenda. And then the next year, we are also going to launch totally new products uh, that are going to be in tandem with the technological developments. And we, as we did this year, just to add, we launched for the first time volume two of the Measuring Information Society. In that volume, we are doing country profiles. Every country is a winner. So we are highlighting the achievements of each country. And the next year, we hope that we may actually embark on capacity building regional initiatives, where we go region by region, run uh, e programs, workshops, to make sure that the countries are ready to collect quality data and to process it and to report it. So we have got a lot of things which are lined up and we look forward to 2018.